Good morning. I am Dr. Kanish Mehta, Associate Professor in American Institute of Medical Sciences, Udaipur. Today we are going to do a short revision of instruments that are important for undergraduate examination. Uh, mind you, we are only going to identify the instruments and talk about certain specific uh, specifications of these instruments. Uh, the related theory or the surgeries that they are used in, the theory of that uh, should be prepared by the students separately. To start with, we are going to do some OPD instruments. The first and most important OPD instrument that you should all know is this bull's eye lamp, which is often used with the uh, head mirror. Nowadays, many ENT surgeons don't use it because of the cumbersome use and the heat produced by the bull's lamp. Uh, also, the light that is produced by the bull's lamp is yellow light and uh, the illumination is better with white light. So that is why nowadays what we do, we prefer a battery operated LED light, which, is, which does not need another light source. This instrument requires another light source and has to be worn on the head with the pinhole in front of the eye. This can be used as a focus. The light source is used is put behind the left shoulder of the patient. Nowadays, we prefer to use an LED light. This LED light is kept on the head and the illumination can be focused on the patient. This head light is very, very important in ENT. Many doctors can uh, prefer to use this over the torch because when you use a head light, your both hands are free to perform any kind of procedure in the OPD. The second important instrument that we should all know is otoscope. This is a otoscope that is used to visualize the tympanic membrane inside. Remember that this otoscope has got a speculum in front of it which is going to be in the external auditory canal. So you are not going to examine the canal with the scope, we examine the tympanic membrane. Similar instrument is oral speculum. This is Toynbee's oral speculum. Now this oral speculum can be used with the headlight. So the illumination here will be through the headlight. The advantage of using a Toynbee's oral speculum is that your hands are free to perform any procedure. When you're using an otoscope, your hand is busy and you cannot put any instrument through the otoscope to remove wax or clear the suction. But when you're using a speculum you can put the wax probe and remove the suction or remove the wax or probe the polyp from the Toynbee's oral speculum. Another instrument is this uh, Jobson horn ring curette with probe. The one side of this is a ring curette which is to curette out any kind of foreign body or wax or sediment from the external canal. The other side is a probe which can be either used to do probing of a polyp or a mass or can be attached to cotton and can be used for clear, clearance of the external artery canal discharges. So this is Jobson horn ring curette with a probe. Another ENT instru ear instrument that you should all know about is the tuning fork. This is Hartman's tuning fork made of stainless steel. There are three uh, frequencies that, that are there that we commonly use in the OPD 256, 512 and 1024 out of which the most commonly used is 512 512 hertz that means it vibrates 512 times per second now there are two three important things that you should know about this number one uh, this has to be stuck struck on a resilient surface. Resilient surface means that is hard enough to cause vibration but not soft enough to cause any kind of dampening. So we do it against any bony surfaces of the body. If you do it against the wall there will be over vibrations or any soft material then there will be dampening of the vibrations. Secondly we prefer 512 because it falls in the speech frequency there is no over vibrations or tone decay in 512 hertz. So we prefer to use 512 over other frequencies. Another very important question that many examiners ask is why it is 512 and why not 500 or 550 is because we all must understand in basic physiology of hearing that when the sound is produced 
इट ट्रेवल्स इन फॉर्म ऑफ ऑक्टेव लाइक म्यूजिकल साउंड सारे गामा पा लाइक दैट सो देर आर एट एट सुर सिमिलरली द साउंड वेव दैट वेव दैट इज फॉर्म ट्रेवल्स इन फॉर्म ऑफ ऑक्टेव सो देर ऑल मल्टीपल्स ऑफ एट so all type of frequencies that we check are always in multiples of 8 like 256 512 or 1024 of course we can check more but those frequencies or those sounds are produced better with the audiometer rather than the tuning forks different type of tuning fork tests can be done like rennes for conductive hearing loss or webers for lateralization of the defect or abc or even tests that we do for melingering so important part is that this hartman tuning fork tests form a very important part of opd evaluation of hearing of any kind of patient now we go to a few instruments from rhinology this is a thadicum's nasal speculum first of all you should understand how to hold this instrument you point your index finger and let the blades go inside the index finger towards your palm so you are you hold it like this press it with your thumb and maneuver with your middle finger and ring finger so that is how you are going to examine the patient of course remember the illumination is going to come from your headlight so this is a uh, instrument that is called thadicum's nasal speculum it is done to done for anterior rhinoscopy on anterior rhinoscopy we can see the turbinates middle and the inferior the septum the nasal flow and any kind of mass that is coming out of the nasal cavity uh so this is thadicum's nasal speculum done for anterior rhinoscopy let me show you again point your finger the blade should go towards your fist hold it with your thumb and maneuver with your middle finger and ring finger now we go to another nasal instrument that is tilly's nasal packing forceps this is a simple forceps without any lock or a without any kind of grip this is basically a atraumatic forceps it is basically used to pack the nose or sometimes to even remove certain small foreign bodies from the nose uh packing of nose is important in cases of epistaxis uh, or in cases of uh, endoscopies so when we do diagnostic or therapeutic nasal endoscopies before that we pack the nose so that the nasal mucosa is decongested and the field is clear for performing any surgery and we get less hemorrhage similarly for epistaxis when we do nas anterior nasal packing either using a paraffin gauze or using a merosine we hold that with the nasal holding forceps that is tilly's nasal holding nasal packing forceps now we will go to a few instruments from uh, throat the first and most important is your lax tongue depressor one part is broad that will go over the tongue the other part has a grip that is for your hand lax tongue depressor is used to care, to carefully examine the oral cavity and the vestibule gingival buccal sulcus buccal mucosa oropharynx and uh, the denture so this is a, an important opd instrument to perform any kind of oral cavity examinations the other uh, instrument that we use for uh, throat is uh, indirect laryngoscopy mirror now this indirect laryngoscopy mirror uh, is a straight handle with a angled mirror uh, it is done to examine the Hello. larynx we are going to get a two dimensional image on the mirror so this is that is why this is called indirect laryngoscopy when we examine the larynx directly through a direct laryngoscope which we are going to do in a short time then that is called the real time image is called direct laryngoscopy now because this is mirror we are going to use in the patient when the patient is awake and in the opd then there is going to be fogging because the patient is breathing at the same time so to defog it either we can put it on a warm or burning spirit or we can dip it in the uh, in a defogging agent like uh, cydex or savlon but this can also trigger gag so what we prefer to do is we anesthetize the oral oropharynx by using a lox spray lignocaine spray so we anesthetize first dip it in a defogging solution and then we hold the tongue and examine 
remember the illumination is again going to come from the headlight uh, before we go into what are the differences between an indirect laryngoscopy and direct laryngoscopy let me tell you what direct laryngoscopy is this is one of the types of direct laryngoscopy there are many types available like you have chevalier jackson's this is a cleansizers direct laryngoscope this can also be used in for doing micro laryngeal surgeries that are surgeries done for vocal cord and can be also used to do direct laryngoscopy there is a prism here that will attach to the light source and we can insert it, this in the patient's mouth and see the larynx directly we get a real time image <coughs> of course when i say that uh, you will understand that this cannot be done on opd basis because this requires anesthesia so patient needs to be in an ot setup and under anesthesia for evaluation because we need complete relaxation of the larynx now there are two different two basic differences between the two of them indirect laryngoscope and direct laryngoscope number one what we see in indirect laryngoscope is a 2d image whereas what we see here is a 3d real-time image that we see in direct laryngoscope the other very important difference between the two is that in direct laryngoscope we can see certain hidden areas that we cannot see in two-dimensional image of indirect laryngoscope what are these hidden areas these are the third dimensional areas like the subglottic space apex of pyriform fossa or the ventricle that is the space between the false and the true vocal cords laterally so these hidden areas cannot be seen with indirect laryngoscope whereas with these can be seen with a direct laryngoscope the third very important difference is that indirect laryngoscope uh, sorry direct laryngoscope uh, our hands are free so we can perform any kind of procedure like removal of any superficial foreign body or taking biopsies from growths of uh, larynx epiglottis laryngopharynx or even deeper in the oropharynx so this is a good instrument to do any therapeutic or diagnostic procedures whereas this is only done for diagnostic purposes in the opd